Are electric vehicles actually cleaner than combustion-powered cars and trucks? We'll answer that thorny and complicated question in this episode of EV Basics. Critics castigate the cleanliness of EVs while proponents of battery-powered cars and trucks proclaim they will save the planet. But who's right? We'll lay to rest the burning question about whether EVs are greener than combustion-powered vehicles in just a second, but right now I will say this. The answer is indisputable, though the process of calculating it is incredibly complicated with lots of math and analysis. Now, before getting to the bottom of this ICE, internal combustion engine, versus EV debate, we first need to understand what we're talking about here. And for this discussion, let's focus solely on carbon dioxide emissions across a vehicle's lifetime. That is, from manufacturing to recycling. And of course, this includes all of the emissions produced while a vehicle is driven. I think a cradle-to-grave approach is the only way to do this comparison fairly because it takes into account manufacturing, fuel and battery pathways, tailpipe emissions, and more. Now, to answer the bedrock question of this video, yes, from a life cycle carbon emissions perspective, EVs are cleaner than ICE cars and trucks significantly cleaner. I'll tell you why and explain how EVs get a bad rap in the first place. There's a lot to talk about right after this. Wireless charging technology from Ytricity, the sponsor of this video, makes life with an electric vehicle even easier. But beyond the convenience of not having to plug in, their system will also support bi-directional charging so your EV can feed electricity directly into your home's wiring system if there's a blackout or the broader power grid during times of high demand. Of course, this is something certain hardwired EV chargers can do as well, but only if they're plugged in. Should you forget to click the connector to your vehicle, you won't get these benefits. Vitricity's wireless charging systems use a technology called magnetic resonance, which makes them just as fast and efficient as level two charging with a cable. So really, there are no downsides to cutting the cord. For more information about Vitricity or wireless charging technology, scan the on-screen QR code or hit the link in the description box down below. Okay, so EVs are far cleaner than ICE vehicles. Here's how we know that. Looking at data from the U.S. Department of Energy, over the course of its lifetime, a 2020 model year small SUV powered by a conventional gasoline engine is estimated to produce an average of 420 grams of greenhouse gas carbon dioxide equivalents per mile driven. In comparison, a model year 2020 electric vehicle with 300 miles of real world range is expected to emit less than half the CO2 equivalents per mile just 206 grams. And that's with the EV being charged using the US average power grid mix, meaning fossil fuels like coal and natural gas are used to generate electricity, along with some renewables like wind and solar. Now for reference, the US EPA has a nifty power profiler tool that lets you see precisely how electricity in your e-grid subregion is generated. For 2021, the latest data available, natural gas and coal accounted for most of the power generated nationally across all 27 subregions, representing more than 60% of our electricity. But nuclear, wind, hydroelectric, and solar are coming on strong, and combined, about 37% of U.S. power comes from these sources. Aside from data published by the Department of Energy, researchers at the Argonne National Laboratory studied lifetime greenhouse gas emissions produced by both EVs and ICE vehicles, and not surprisingly, they reached the same conclusion. They compared 2020 model year cars with an expected lifetime of 173,151 miles, an oddly specific number, but for their calculations, the gas model returned 30.7 mpg, while the electric had 300 miles of range and was charged with power, having average U.S. grid emissions. So in this model, the gasoline car produces around 375 grams of greenhouse gas emissions per mile driven over its lifetime. As for the EV, its total emissions are only around 150 grams per mile. Here's where I think car buyers get confused, though, and rightly so. 
Because what's interesting is that while over their lifetimes, EVs are far and away cleaner than ICE cars and trucks, building them is actually much dirtier, a fact critics often mention. Citing research done by the Argonne National Laboratory, MIT's Climate Portal says that because of their battery packs, building new electric vehicles results in around 80% more emissions than producing a similar gasoline-powered car or truck. That's a huge difference! In fact, it's estimated that assembling an 80 kilowatt hour Tesla Model 3 lithium ion battery, just the pack, creates between two and a half and 16 metric tons of CO2. That's potentially more than 35,000 pounds of carbon dioxide emissions. Of course, those come from a range of sources. You may mine for lithium or other raw materials in South America, which takes huge amounts of fossil fuels. In fact, it's estimated that 15,000 metric tons of CO2 are released for every ton of hard rock lithium that's mined. Those materials then might get shipped to China, where they're refined and assembled into battery cells. Of course, that produces more emissions. Those finished components might then be loaded onto another boat and shipped across the ocean to the US, which produces loads of CO2. The cells could then take a train ride across the country to an automaker's manufacturing plant where they finally get installed in a vehicle, which means even more carbon dioxide is emitted. Surprisingly, this process closely mirrors the fuel pathway for gasoline. I mean, think about it. You have to discover exploitable oil deposits, then pump the stuff to the surface, refine it, blend it, and transport it, with carbon being emitted every step of the way, even before the stuff gets burned. Over their lifetimes, gas-powered vehicles are so much dirtier than EVs because setting dead dinosaurs on fire produces loads of carbon dioxide. Here's a fun fact for a little perspective. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, when burned, a gallon of gasoline blended with around 10% ethanol produces nearly 18 pounds of CO2, so emissions add up very quickly. I mean, that's one hell of a chemical reaction. Now, I'm not taking this into account here, but we can't forget it's not just carbon dioxide. EVs emit no hydrocarbons, particulates, nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, none of that nasty stuff. Sure, power plants produce emissions, but it's far easier to control at a single source than at millions of tailpipes. And if you still don't believe that EVs are greener, here's yet another data point. The U.S. Department of Energy's Alternative Fuels Data Center says that nationally, the average CO2 equivalent emissions for an all-electric vehicle are 2,817 pounds per year, compared to 12,594 pounds annually for a gasoline-powered vehicle. And that means internal combustion is four and a half times worse. Yes, hybrids and plug-ins fall between these extremes. And finally, even if electrics only lasted half as long as gas-powered cars, say 90,000 miles compared to 180, an MIT study still shows that EVs are 15% cleaner than hybrids and miles ahead of comparable ICE vehicles. So there you have it. We covered a lot of data and different estimates in this video, but the big takeaway is that EVs are far cleaner to own and operate than ICE vehicles, even if they can be significantly dirtier to build. With electrics, you're basically paying for the carbon emissions up front, though a lot fewer of them, rather than over the life of the vehicle. And even if they're not truly emissions-free, EVs are still clearly better for the environment. And with that, I hope you gained a thing or two, but if you want to learn more, go crazy deciphering scientific jargon, or double check the math, we have links to all of our sources in the description box below, so knock yourself out. Next, learn all about the different kinds of electric vehicle chargers that are out there, from plug designs to speeds and feeds. Click right over here for the whole story, and a whole lot more.